so we will start now <coughs> screen is visible to all of you ok so today we will start this internal expanding brick ok <coughs> in the schematic and the actual figure of internal uh, expanding deck you can see here so this is known as your internal expanding brick okay uh, it essentially consists of a drum here you can see this is the brake drum and two uh, brake shoes are used one is your leading or primary shoe this one and another one is trailing or secondary shoe and there is a friction lining on the shoe and that friction material used is generally ferrado ok you can see it is ferrado and <coughs> this distance is A okay, from here to here and two centers are there and the leading shoe the center is O1 and on the trailing shoe the center is called O2 okay. then <coughs> this total angle is psi 2 and this one is psi 1 and force is applied here on both the shoes if in this direction and also same amount of force on the trailing shoe both are f okay. so we can write here that uh, <coughs> the internal expanding brakes have replaced have replaced the band brakes band brakes uh, the brake consists of the brake consists of at least one <coughs> self energized energized shoe per wheel okay. and this results in this results in tremendous friction okay. giving excessive breaking power breaking power ok so now <coughs> the schematic you can see uh, it essentially consists of it consists of two semicircular semicircular shoe okay two semicircular shoe <coughs> which are linked with a which are linked with a 
with a friction material generally uh, ferredo is used uh, the shoe gets pressed against the inner inner flange of the drum when brakes are applied okay under normal running condition under normal running condition the drum rotates rotates freely at the outer diameter dia of shoe sorry as the outer dia of shoe is less than less than internal diameter of drum if you are not applying any force there won't be any contact between the <coughs> brake shoe and the drum because the outer diameter of the shoes are less than that of the inner diameter of the brake drum okay that's why now <coughs> let let p subscript n superscript l it indicates maximum intensity of pressure maximum intensity of pressure on the leading on the leading shoe okay this l indicates leading shoe okay and p n t the maximum intensity of maximum intensity of normal pressure okay you can write here normal normal pressure on the trailing shoe or secondary shoe okay now let's say w is the width of the braking line width of braking line mu is the coefficient coefficient of friction plus coefficient of friction then uh, total braking torque total braking torque okay 
denoted by T B will be equal to R square mu uh, W sorry, mu W P normal leading plus P normal trailing into cos psi 1 minus cos of psi 2. You have to remember this formula. This is the formula to find out total breaking torque in case of your internal expanding brake. Okay. Derivation is not required, that is why I have not done. Now, in this regard, now we can solve <coughs> a problem. Uh, Let us say This is the example given here, example 1 of internal expanding brake. You can see the following data refers to the internal expanding shoe brake. Force applied on each shoe is 180 Newton, coefficient of friction mu is given 0 0.3, internal radius of the brake drum R is given 150 mm, width of brake lining W is uh, given uh, 40 mm, distance is uh, A is given 200, C is 120 mm, psi 1 30 degree, psi 2 135 degree. Okay. Determine, determine the braking torque applied when the drum rotates counterclockwise and when it rotates in clockwise direction. Okay. So, we have to solve it. So, <coughs> first we will consider case 1. Let us say for the counterclockwise rotation. Counter clockwise rotation ok. So, for the uh, leading shoe for the leading shoe taking moment about center O 1 ok from that <coughs> schematic from here ok. This is the leading shoe we will take moment about this O 1 ok. So, we will have force is applied here this is the force acting on the leading shoe. So, this F into this normal distance F into A acting in anti clockwise direction ok minus the normal reaction okay, uh, which vary from angle psi 1 to psi 2. So, we will write the equation um, F dot A acting anti clockwise minus integration of psi 1 to psi 2 okay, normal reaction on the leading into C sin theta plus similarly on the <coughs> other side you will have integration psi 1 to 
side to uh, this this is the frictional force mu r n l huh? mu r n l 1 minus c cos theta is equal to 0 this is the total moment equation about center o1 for the leading shoe okay then if you solve this uh, f is 180 into a is 200 mm so 0.2 minus of <coughs> this equation will be uh, 0.15 into 0 0.12 into 0 0.04 p normal of leading divided by 4 ok <coughs> into 2 into 135 you have to convert that into radian so pi by 180 minus 2 into 30 for psi 1 and convert that into radian so pi by 180 minus sin 270 plus sin 60 if you solve this you will get ok try to solve it by yourself then again for that plus variant it will be 0 0.3 into 0 0.15 into 0 0.04 into p n of leading divided by 4 into 4 into 0 0.15 multiply with cos 30 minus cos 135 so uh, again we have minus term also so 0 0.12 cos 60 minus cos 270 is equal to 0 this is the total equation if you solve this ok so this will give you p n of leading value equal to 60201 newton per meter square normal pressure acting on the leading shoe you will get Likewise, for the trailing wheels, for the trailing wheels, <coughs> it will be thirty six minus point zero 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 double nine six pn of trailing minus 0 0.000398 pn of trailing is equal to 0 if you take moment about that o2 so this will be pnt is 25825 Newton per meter square. Okay, so the breaking torque now you can find out breaking torque T B is R square mu W P N of leading plus P N of trailing into cos psi 1 
minus of cos psi 2 so <coughs> we have 0 0.15 our radius square mu value is 0 0.3 w is 0 0.04 the width then p1 p and l we got as 60201 and this is 25 825 newton per meter square multiply with cos 30 minus cos 135 so this will give you 36.5 newton meter okay so this was all for your <coughs> Uh, anti -clock, counter clockwise direction now for clockwise rotation for clockwise rotation the value you have to write the value of pnl and P and T are interchanged. If you <coughs> uh, take moment um, uh, during this uh, direction of rotation, you will find just their value have been interchanged. Okay, so the overall value will remain same, interchange, and so the overall. value of breaking torque breaking torque remains same okay. this type of question you will get in internal expanding break okay. next is uh, breaking of a vehicle breaking of a vehicle mm, suppose we will draw a schematic like this vehicle is standing on a slope slopey road okay whose g is acting somewhere here at a ground level of h from the road surface let's say this height is h okay and the load acting normal to the ground is say m g if m is the mass of the vehicle then this acting vertically will be sorry vertically it is mg okay and this angle is alpha so this will be mg cos alpha okay and the distance from wheel is say x and uh, total distance between the axis of wheel is let us say L. Okay. Let us say this is wheel A, this is wheel B. Now, the normal reaction acting on wheel <coughs> A will be say R A and on that of the wheel B is rb okay now suppose the wheel is moving 
in clockwise direction as it is moving up the slope in this way. So, the force of friction, the force of friction will act in downward direction here and here and its value will be mu r b for wheel b and it will be mu r a for wheel a right. <coughs> All of you drawn this schematic. Hmm? Hmm. Is it visible clearly to all of you? Yes. So, draw it quickly. Okay. Now, consider a vehicle is moving up, is moving up an inclined, an inclined plane. Okay. And we have different case, first case one is brakes are applied, brakes are applied on rear wheel only, on rear wheel only. Now, <coughs> let M is the mass of vehicle, mass of vehicle alpha, this is alpha, <coughs> alpha is the angle of inclination with horizontal with horizontal uh, your R A and R B, the reactions, reactions of uh, ground on the front and uh, rear wheels respectively, rear wheels respectively, R A is your front wheel, okay, B is your rear wheel. Now, uh, let us say F is the retardation of vehicle. retardation of vehicle L is the wheel base wheel base of the vehicle H is the height of uh, height of CG from inclined plane, from inclined plane, okay. And x, x is the distance of center of mass from rear. from rear axle, rear axle mu is the coefficient of coefficient of friction. So, all the parameters how we uh, describe. Now, for equilibrium for equilibrium this uh, means normal to the inclined plane okay we are considering 
net force acting in upward direction is R A plus R B. So, and net force acting in downward direction is M G cos alpha. Okay. So, this is equation one. This is normal to the inclined plane. Normal to the inclined plane. Now, along the inclined plane, what are the forces acting? It is mu R B plus m g sin alpha okay should be equal to m into the retardation force <coughs> mf okay along the inclined plane let's say it is equation 2 and acting along the inclined plane okay now taking moment taking moment about g yes we are considering only rear brakes assumption is case 1 brakes are applied on the rear wheel only okay now taking moment about g if you take moment about g so r b x plus mu r b into h okay uh, minus r a into l minus of x should be equal to 0 if you take moment about g considering all the forces acting. Now, let us say this is equation 3. So, from equation 1, from equation 1, your R A is equal to M G cos alpha minus R B. Let us say this is equation 4. Now, substituting the value, the value of R A in equation 4, for A in <coughs> equation 4 into equation 3 what we will get that R B x plus mu R B into h minus of uh, this m g cos alpha instead of R A we are writing m g cos alpha minus R B into L minus x is equal to 0. So, now uh, let us take R B common. So, we have x plus mu h okay, plus L minus x is equal to bring m g to the right hand side. So, you will have m g uh, cos alpha into L minus x. Okay. So, this gives you the reaction force acting at the trailing wheel R b is equal to your m g cos alpha L minus of x divided by L plus mu h okay. because this and this will get cancel out. Okay. So, you got the reaction force at wheel B that is the trailing wheel this is equation 5. Now, substituting
the value of Rb into equation 2 we have mu into mg cos alpha into L minus x divided by L plus mu h k instead of Rb I am writing this plus mg sin alpha is mass into the retardation. So, from here you can find out the retardation force F is equal to um, mu g cos alpha L minus x divided by L plus mu h plus your g sin alpha okay. or upon further simplification f can be expressed as g cos alpha if you take out it will be mu into l minus x divided by l plus mu h plus tan alpha. This is the formula to find out the retardation force. Let us say this is equation 6. Okay. Now, on a plane on a plane or level road when there is no inclination alpha will be 0. So, in that case the retardation force will be <coughs> equal to uh, g into mu L minus x divided by L plus mu x when alpha is 0. This is equation 7. Now, when the vehicle instead of going up moves down, when the vehicle moves down the plane, down the plane, in that case this f f is equal to g cos alpha into mu into L minus x divided by uh, L plus mu h minus tan alpha. So, you have to remember the three conditions to find out this retardation force whether it is moving upward direction whether it is moving downward direction or it is moving on a plane road okay accordingly formula will be applied let's say this is equation 8 okay now this was the condition when brakes are applied to the rear wheel now case 2 when brakes are applied to front wheel okay when brakes are applied to the front wheel in that case your r a plus r b is equal to m g cos alpha let us say equation 1. So, and mu r a plus m g sin alpha is equal to m f equation 2. This is normal 
two plane normal to the inclined plane this is parallel to the plane equation okay now taking moment about g the center of mass taking moment Uh, about G, your R B X plus mu R A H minus R A into L minus X. Okay, is equal to zero. Let's say equation three. Now, from equation one, from equation one, we have R B is equal to uh, M G cos alpha minus R A. Okay. Uh, let's say this is equation four. Now. substituting the value of rb in equation 3 will give us this mg cos alpha minus ra Into x plus mu r a h minus r a into l minus x equal to zero. Okay. So if you solve it further, you have this <coughs> um, r a uh, x minus mu h plus l minus x is equal to mg uh, x cos alpha okay or you can say your r a is equal to mg x cos alpha mg x cos alpha divided by L minus mu h. Okay, this is the reaction force acting on the leading wheel. Equation five. So equation two becomes equation two becomes uh, mu times of m g x cos alpha. Divided by L minus mu h. This is the value of R a plus m g sine alpha is equal to mass into force of retardation. So from this, you will get retardation force F as g cos alpha. mu x divided by l minus mu h plus tan alpha let's say this is equation 6 and for a label road this alpha will be 0 so f will be g mu x okay divided by your l minus mu h this is equation 7 when the vehicle <coughs> is moving in downward direction downward direction then f will be 
g cos alpha mu x divided by l minus mu h minus of tan alpha this is equation 8 ok so basically you have to remember this equation for f 3 during uh, if brakes are applied to the uh, trailing wheel and 3 equations when the brakes are applied to the leading wheels ok and the normal reaction equation now <coughs> the case when brakes are applied brakes are applied to all the four wheels to all the four wheels in that case what will happen so in this case for equilibrium your R A plus R B should be equal to M G cos alpha equation 1 and mu R A plus mu R B plus M G sin alpha should be equal to M F okay or you can say mu R A plus R B plus M G sin alpha is equal to M F okay. or if you solve it further we will have mu into M G cos alpha because R A plus R, uh, R B is M G cos alpha plus this M G sin alpha is equal to M F. So, this is equation 2. So, from here you can find out F as G cos alpha into mu plus tan alpha the retardation force ok let us say this is equation 3 and on a level road when alpha is equal to 0 this uh, f will be g into mu simply and on down plane on down plane when the vehicle is moving in downward direction in that case f will be g cos alpha into mu minus of tan alpha ok so this is equation 4 this is equation 5 ok this is all about the <coughs> vehicle frictions ok when only rear wheel only front wheel and with all the wheels condition suppose mm, a question will be given to you like this mm, a vehicle having a wheel base x is given 3.2 meter uh, sorry l is given has its center of mass 1.4 meter h is given from the rear wheel and 55 mm from the uh, sorry 55 mm from the ground level this is h it moves on a level ground at a speed of 54 km per hour determine the distance moving by a car before coming to rest 
on applying the brakes to the rear wheel to the front wheel and to all the wheels if mu is 0 0.5 okay. so in this question let s is the distance covered by vehicle before it come to rest comes to rest okay. now initial velocity initial velocity uh, u is 54 kilometer per hour that means it is 54000 means meter divided by 3600 in second so it is 15 meter per second now condition one when brakes are applied to the rear wheels brakes applied to rear wheels in that case f is g mu l minus x divided by l plus mu h from the formula so we have 9.81 into 0 0.5 is the mu 3.2 is l minus 1.4 k is the x divided by l plus mu h so 3.2 plus 0 0.5 times of 0 0.55 so this will give you 2.54 meter per second square okay if retardation is uniform then you can use this equation v square uh, minus e square is equal to um, minus 2 f s because it is retardation ok. So, final velocity is 0. So, 0 minus 15 square is equal to minus of 2 into 2.54 into the distance s ok. So, s will be 44.3 <laughs> meter. So, after 44.3 meter the vehicle will stop okay, when brakes are applied to the rear wheels. Second condition when brakes applied to front wheel, front wheel. So, in that case f is g uh, mu x divided by l minus mu h ok. So, 9.81 into mu is 0 0.5 into x is 1.4 divided by this is 3.2 minus 0 0.5 times of 0 0.55. So, this will give you 2.35 meter per second square. So, the distance travel is will be your u square by 2 f simply. So, u is uh, 15 square divided by 2 into 2.35 so, it is 47.9 meter. 
okay now third condition breaks are applied are applied to all the wheels to all the wheels in that case f is equal to simply g times of mu so it is 9.81 into 0.5 so it is 4.905 meter per second square and distance s is equal to e square by 2f so 4.905 square divided by 2 into uh, sorry this is 15 no 15 square divided by 2 into 4.905 so it will be 22.9 meter hmm. so this type of question you will get in your vehicle case okay. understood yeah this is the question so in the next class we will start your dynamometer okay